Okay, guys, in this video lesson, we're going to talk a little bit more about the mechanical model, and, and we're actually going to kind of dive into orbital theory and kind of what uh, these orbitals are. Okay, uh, To do that, we're going to start with actually a video on electron behavior here and what those orbitals work. So here you go. The uncertainty principle holds that it is impossible to know the position and velocity of electrons at the same time. All we can do is describe the probability that an electron might be found within a certain region. However, electrons with a given energy follow certain patterns around the nucleus. These are called atomic orbitals. Chemists picture the orbitals like clouds that are dense in areas where the electron is more likely to be and less dense in others where there is less probability of it being found. Each atomic orbital may be described by a set of four quantum numbers. The principal quantum number is called n. As n increases in value, the atomic orbitals become larger in size, and the electrons are found further away from the nucleus. As atomic numbers of elements increase, they have electrons in these larger orbitals, and therefore the size of the atom increases. Orbitals of lower principal quantum number have lower energy. The electrons first fill up the orbitals of lower energy before orbitals of higher energy. The second quantum number, L, refers to the shape of the orbital. There are four important shapes, each with a slightly different energy. All S-shaped orbitals are spherical. P are dumbbell-shaped. And the D and F orbital shapes are more complicated, as shown in these drawings. The third quantum number refers to the orientation of the orbital. This refers only to the P, D, and F-shaped orbitals. And finally, the fourth quantum number refers to the spin of the electron. An electron can be thought of as spinning on its axis in two possible directions. This means an orbital can only accommodate two electrons, each spinning in opposite directions. So the energy of an electron orbital is described by both the principal quantum number n and the second quantum number l together. As n increases, there is more than one orbital shape. For example, where n is equal to 2, there are s and p shaped orbitals. s orbitals have lower energy than p orbitals and fill first. At n equals 3, d orbitals with higher energies than p fill last. This diagram shows how the orbitals of the elements from 1 to 10 fill with electrons, filling the orbitals of lowest energy first. The p orbitals take one electron each, and after this, pairing begins. This is repeated with all of the elements. It is called Hund's rule of maximum multiplicity. Look at oxygen, for example, element 8. A neutral oxygen atom has eight electrons. The two in the first energy level are in the s orbital. In the second energy level, two are in an s orbital, and then as the p orbitals are filled, one electron goes into each of the p orbitals and the last electron pairs with p1. The electron configurations of atoms have a direct relationship in how they interact with each other to create molecules and compounds and all matter in the universe. With an understanding of the structure of atoms and the behavior of electrons, it is possible to predict with great accuracy how elements behave and combine. This is one of the most remarkable achievements of modern science. Okay, so they talked a lot about a lot of different things in that video, and we'll hit them in more detail as we go through our next few slides. <clears throat> but the key here is that within our different energy levels, the one through seven we've talked about before, we actually have different orbitals, okay? And the orbitals themselves actually have different orientations on them, okay? And we'll hit them all here coming up here. 
But it's not as simple as just, you know, rings around an atom like we talked about in the planetary model. It's a much more complex system, and we'll kind of break it all down for you guys as we move forward. So, first thing we want to do is talk about these different orbitals, okay? And what are they, and what do they look like, and that kind of stuff. So, we have four types of orbitals. And the first one uh, is our easiest one to look at. It's the one visually that we would think would be... Uh, like on any other thing. So it's spherical in nature, okay? We actually call it sharp, okay? So if you want, to, its official term is called the sharp, which the S comes from the sharp, okay? It can house two electrons inside it, okay? Um, that's our first energy shape. That's our lowest of our orbitals, actually, in terms of energy. The second type of orbital that we can have is called the principal orbitals, or a P orbital. Now, the P orbital can hold up to six electrons total because it has three different orientations to it. So we have a P orbital along the x-axis. We call that Px. We have one on the y-axis. We call that Py. And we have one on, on the z-axis. So we call that Pz. So there are three different orientations inside the P orbital. So it can hold you know, two electrons in each orientation, or two times three is six. Okay? Uh, the next type is called the D orbital. D stands for diffuse, okay? And now we get even more complex. Within the D orbital, we have four different uh, regions on every orientation. So if we start to move them around, uh, we have uh, this orientation, this orientation, this orientation, this orientation, and then we have this weird one down here we call, that's called DZ squared. It's actually the name of it. Uh, and this is the different shapes or the different orientations on the D orbital. Because we have one, two, three, four, five different orientations, each orientation can hold two electrons. So we have five times two for 10 total electrons in our diffuse orbitals. Okay. The last type is called F, stands for fundamental. Whether you get these words from, I have no clue. Uh, and here it gets even more complex. So you look at these different orientations of the F. What it comes down to though, if we count, there's seven different orientations that the F orbital uh, houses or can host those different those seven different orientations then allow for two electrons at each orientation so seven times two is fourteen okay um, oops I want to go back here to give you a little bit idea on how this works in terms of wave patterns okay um, if we take a look when you have an s orbital and you're looking at wave like behavior of those electrons the s orbital is basically has a single place where the electron can exist. So you notice on the outer edges here where it's white or there's no wave movement, okay, that's where the area of probability falls apart. So only on this inner star where you see the color changing is where the S orbital can exist, is within this region. Okay? You look at a P orbital, and a P orbital has two different spots. So you have this area or this node in between that stays white. Notice how this doesn't change color, it basically stays white this whole time, right here. And you can't find electrons there. So they only can be found in this area or this area, one of the two. Okay? Your D-shaped orbitals now start to break it down into four different regions around the atom that you can find electrons. And they have more nodes inside here where you can't find electrons. Okay? And if we keep going down here, we start getting to, here's like some F stuff, um, and get some combinations of them now put together. And you can see that we get really complex regions where we can find the electron. Okay? So we can't draw this. Like, how do I draw this to show people where the electrons can be? It can be here, it can be there, 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 it can be there. Can be there. And that's all one orbital. It's all one spot electrons can exist. Never could do that if it was a particle. Has to be acting as a wave to do that. Here's another weird one, and here's another one. Okay. Um, as you kind of see the different possibilities here. So this kind of gives you just a visual on these different nodes and places where you can see electrons. Anywhere you see color, that's where the electrons can exist based on their different orbitals. Okay. Now, this website is not an orbital website. It's acoustics because the movement across a, a membrane of a drum would mimic basically how an orbital would look two-dimensionally for us anyway. Okay. So we have that there for you guys. It's kind of a visual. Um, We've already done this. We're going to go through it quickly to get to the next page. Okay. Now, as we start doing this, and once we understand what these different orbitals are, we actually have to start to map out where the um, 
electrons exist. So there's some rules we have to follow. So within these orbitals, we have a few rules we want to follow. Okay, so here's our rules. Okay, we, they're called the off-ball principle, the Pauli exclusion principle, and Hund's rule. Okay, in the next video, we will go into detail on these different rules and how we apply these rules to orbitals to then configure where our electrons are located. Thank you.